Hey guys, Scott from Fry Props here, and today I am very excited to be introducing a brand new controller. This is the Pico Servo, and it's our first servo controller. It's meant to be extremely easy to use. You don't need to use any computer programming. It can store uh, two different programs and control up to four servos. And it is also triggerable, so that you can store a uh, sequence of servo movement and then trigger that sequence with any of our standard triggers. As you can see, it's a small controller. Um, it has the trigger inputs here at the bottom, servo uh, outputs here, so you just plug your servos right into the controller there. Uh, on the top are the LEDs for status indication, this is the record and play button, and this wheel is what will allow you to actually program the motion of the servos. This controller has a lot of features. Today we're just going to be taking a quick look at some of the basic operations, how to set it up for the first time to control servos, and how to program the servos with the controller. The first thing you're going to want to do is set your limits for your servos. So uh, to do that, we're going to go ahead and go into the settings menu of the uh, Pico servo here. So to do that, we're just going to hold down the record button and we're going to plug in our power. Now the Pico servo uses uh, either uh, between 5 and 7.4 volt DC power. We're using a 6 volt power supply. Most servos run at about 6 volts. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in while holding down the record button. When the light starts blinking, we can let go. Now we are in the settings uh, menu and the first uh, setting that we're going to be looking at here are for the input modes. You can have a bunch of different modes that affect how the inputs relate to each other. We're just going to skip that and leave it at one blink. That's the default mode for the inputs. We're going to press the record button to move on to the servo settings menu. All right, so when we're in the servo settings menu, while the light is blinking once, we can use the wheel to select between our four different servos. So we're going to select servo one and that's the servo we're going to edit. We're going to tap the record button. Now it will uh, let us choose the output mode for that servo output. We're going to just set that to number one. That's the normal mode. There are a couple other modes that you can use if you have preferences on how your servos operate. We're just going to go ahead and leave it at one. So we're going to just click that. And now it's going to let us set the left limit of the servo. So you can see when I move the dial here, the servo will move as well. So this is where we want the servo to be when we go all the way to the left. And what I like to do is go until the servo stops and then just nudge it back just a little bit so that the servo is not straining against its uh, outermost limit. And then we'll hit uh, record to set that. And now we'll set the right limit. So we just go all the way to the right, nudge it back a little bit, and press record. Now we'll go to setting the acceleration of the servo. So we'll start slowly rotating backwards and forwards. And you can use the dial to adjust how fast you want the upper speed limit to be. So if you're trying to do something with a little bit slower, more subtle motion, you could set the maximum speed of the servo to something low so that you never have to, uh, so that the servo never moves too fast. We want to make sure we can use the full uh, speed of the servo. So we're just going to set the dial all the way to the right and hit record. All right, and that is that servo set up. I've already done the other three servos here, so we can go ahead and start actually programming the servos. So we have two different styles of servos here. We have our standard servos, and we also have our quarter scale or large servos. They program exactly the same. The only difference is the size and obviously the amount of torque that they can exert. All right, the first thing we have to do is choose which servo we're gonna control. So to do that, we're gonna hold down the red record button until the red LED stops blinking. Now we're going to keep the record button held down and this is how we select which servo we want to control, just using the dial. So we're going to start with servo 1, I'm going to release the button. You see now that by turning the dial I'm controlling servo number 1. So we can go ahead and start it at the center here and then to record our animation we just hold down the record button and release it when the LED is blinking red. And now we're recording and we can record any sequence of movements we want, back and forth, and hit record again to save. Now that recording is saved in the Pico servo. We can go ahead and do the other three servos. And when we're recording them, it will play back any existing animation for the servers, which you'll see as we go forward. So let's go to servo two. We're gonna hold down the record button, wait for the red LED to stop blinking, go to servo number two, release. Now you can see we're controlling servo number two. All right, we'll center that one. Go ahead and hold down record until the LED starts blinking red. Let it go, and now we can program our second servo. 
And you see the first servo is playing what we recorded earlier. And we're gonna just keep going down the line now. Select servo number three here. All right, and finally we're gonna select servo number four. All right, our recording is done. We've now programmed all four servos. We can tap the record button to play our recording. And it's just that easy. So you can see that uh, there's a ton of useful applications for this, from creating animatronic characters to uh, moving items in an escape room. We're really excited to see uh, what you guys come up with. Of course, the uh, Pico Servo does have a trigger input, so let's go ahead and wire up a uh, trigger quickly to show you how that works. We're gonna be wiring up a simple two-wire push button for this demonstration. So you can see that the uh, Pico Servo has uh, the trigger inputs here at the bottom. To use a simple push button, we're going to have a jumper wire going from the positive power input over to the uh, common, and then the two wires from the button are just gonna go in one and negative. I'm gonna wire that up now, and I'll be right back. All right, so we have our push button wired up. You can see here that we have our jumper wire between positive and common. Then we have one wire from the push button going to one, and the other wire going to negative. Now if we push our button here, it's gonna play our show. So the Pico Servo actually has two trigger inputs, which means you could have a different show that played when a different trigger was activated. So you can have a show on input one, a show on input two. You can also loop trigger input number one to have an ambient show, so the servos can be moving all the time when the unit's powered on, and then input number two can interrupt that to change the movement when a trigger is tripped. Now let's check out an example of some of the cool stuff you can do with this tech. So here we have a skull that we've attached to one of our servos. We've installed the servo in a servo block and then used some of our mounting hardware to attach it to the skull. I've plugged that servo into the Pico servo and we can now actually control the motion of the skull. So let's go ahead and program that. Again, same as before, just hold down record until the red starts blinking, let go, and now we can record a sequence. When we're happy with our recording, we just tap record to save it. And just like before, we can press our trigger button to play it back. So that's an example of some of the most simple stuff you can do with this controller and the servos. Of course, you can do much more complex stuff, and we're really excited to see where you guys go with that. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks.